Hello everyone, find me Nalei here. Hope you all are having a wonderful day so far. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about my experience at this year's Not Scary Farm. And I'll also be sharing my thoughts on all the mazes and scare zones. So, let's not waste any time. Let's just get straight into it. Now before I talk about the actual event, I want to share with you guys something that I haven't really seen a whole lot of people talk about on YouTube. And that's the buffet. For those of you that don't know, the buffet is basically what the name implies. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet. But other than eating all you can eat, it also comes with early access to four of the mazes and even some cool interactions with the monsters while you're dining. And it only costs $50 on top of whatever scary farm ticket you have. And if you ask me, I think that's a pretty good deal. I've been doing this buffet for about three years now, three years in a row. And I would say the first time I did it was it definitely had the best food options. Second year was okay, but it felt like it had less options. Anyways, here comes year three of the buffet. And for the previous two years, I ended up eating at the chicken restaurant that's right outside the park. But this year I ate at the Spurs restaurant. It's a lot more open and a lot more lively. The food options are pretty much the same as last year. In terms of what exactly the options are, there are different kinds of foods that include beef sirloin, fried chicken, chicken parmesan, enchiladas, barbecue and vegan meatballs, deviled eggs, and much more. Some of the desserts include red velvet cake slices, spooky cake slices, exclusive ice cream, and regular name brand ice creams. The food overall was mostly good, especially for a theme park. So again, I highly recommend getting the buffet add-on if you ever plan on going to Scary Farm. Now, on to the actual event. I want to talk about the returning mazes first and save the newest ones for last. Let's first discuss the ones that had their final runs this year, which were Waxworks and Bloodline. And funnily enough, these two are actually my least favorites of the whole lineup. Bloodline was originally a shooter maze during its first run, and they stripped that all away in the future versions. And during that first run, I actually thought it wasn't that bad. The maze itself does have some very unique set pieces and a lot of kinetic lively moments. The shooting aspect of it was kind of confusing and kind of odd because you had to shoot the vampires and aim for their collars to actually shoot them but there was no point system and it was actually hard to tell if you actually did a good job of killing the vampires. But fast forward to 2023 and 2024. The guns are completely gone and it's just a regular maze. They removed an entire pre-show setting up like the whole shooting aspect and I gotta say it felt really awkward without it. It just became like a lot of open space that wasn't really themed. Also, for some reason, they made the maze a lot darker. As you can see from my footage that I took, it was dark as hell. Uh, there was especially this one long hallway where it was just pitch black and every once in a while a vampire would like fly over you. But uh, yeah, other than that, like Bloodline just got worse and worse and I'm kind of glad it had its last run this year. Now we have Waxworks. It seems like this one is a fan favorite in the scary farm community. I'm gonna be real with y'all, I honestly don't see it. I did enjoy it at first, but I guess for me, it just pales in comparison with all the other mazes. It has some interesting set pieces, but honestly, that's all about it. The story isn't really unique or interesting, it just strikes me as like a House of Wax ripoff. And honestly, there's not much else I can say about Waxworks, because the maze doesn't really have much to offer, at least in my eyes. Again, I don't think it's terrible, but it was certainly my least favorite of the year. And this is another one that I'm kind of glad I get to never see again. Now let's move on to the returning mazes that aren't going away anytime soon. Let's start with Origins Curse of Calico. This one is always fun. Not necessarily in my top 5, but it's a good time. It is very unique in terms of the story and all the characters and set pieces featured because it's connected to the history of the Calico area in the theme park. But uh, yeah, not much else to say here, but I just love how Halloween-y the maze feels. Next up is the Grimoire. Uh, I do like this one, although I do think it peaked in its first year. They had a cool pre-show where guests stayed in the room and actually saw the story get set up. In the future iterations, you kind of see that, but now you gotta keep moving. I noticed that's like a common thing that happens in a couple of the mazes at Scary Farm. I'll get back to that a little later, but Grimoire overall is still a good time. I like a lot of the art direction from the black and white segments. The pacing does kind of slow down when we get back to the campgrounds. Also, when I went through the maze this year, it seemed a lot darker. Like, it almost seemed like they took away a lot of the lighting in the outdoor sections. I don't know, just something seemed off about that second half compared to previous years. But it didn't really tamper my experience or anything. So uh, yeah, Grimoire is uh, still solid. 
Next up is Mesmer. Now this one has always been one of my favorites. It debuted back in 2021, which was actually my first year at sending Scary Farm. I was really impressed with the quality of all the mazes back then, especially Mesmer. It was so unique and unlike anything I've seen in a haunted attraction. This maze did suffer the same fate as Grimoire where there was a pre-show that kind of set up the story during its first run, but it was removed in the later seasons. I especially had a great experience with Mesmer this year. There was one part where I got so scared, it, it, it kind of like rocked me, like you could even hear it in the footage. Oh my god! Oh my god! So yeah, so far, Mesmer has always been a blast. I'll never get tired of this one. Now we have Room 13. I'm gonna be honest, when I first experienced this maze, I liked it, but I didn't love it. Don't get me wrong, I thought it was well made, and I liked how it connected to the Goring 20 scare zone, but there was just something about Room 13 that just felt off. Supposedly, it explains the origins of the Devil's Elixir and how it corrupts people. I didn't really get any answers regarding all of that, the maze just felt like a collection of creepy stuff happening in a hotel. And also, the music they played was a big part of like the off-putting feel I had for Room 13. They just played like the same two notes in every room. The dom, dom, dom. Yeah, I, I don't think Room 13 was even on my top 5 of last year. However, it was a tiny bit better this time around. I noticed a lot more special effects I didn't catch the first time, and yes, the music is mostly the same, but at least they added a little bit of instrumentals here and there. But uh, yeah, overall, Room 13 is good, just wish it was great. Now we have Chilling Chambers. I really enjoyed Chilling Chambers from last year. It was the anniversary maze that celebrated the 50 year old history of Halloween at Knott's. It was hosted slash narrated by The Keeper. He would pop up every once in a while via projections. And overall, I just love the variety of all the different characters and environments. You could feel the passion and care that was put into making this maze. Fast forward to 2024, and I thought it was a pretty big downgrade. Any remnants of The Keeper or mentions of the 50th anniversary are completely absent. And I gotta be honest, it really made that much of a difference for me. It just felt like a greatest hits maze, but with the anniversary theme, it feels a lot more complete. The lack of Mr. Keeper really makes the theme or like the experience feel very awkward. I don't understand why he's not included this time around. I understand not showing any ties to the 50th anniversary, but without The Keeper, there's no one to keep the chilling chamber safe. Oh well. I hope he does come back for next year's base. If not, then I hope I'll eventually get used to his absence. Next up, we have Cinema Slasher, and honestly, this one is probably my least favorite maze. Not just the knots, but like of all time. Like it's just so lame, not exciting, very cheesy, and sick. Cinema Slasher at Not Scary Farm is probably one of the greatest walkthrough attractions I've ever experienced. My favorite subgenre of horror has always been slasher films, so this premise was tailor made for me. You walk inside and that premise is so well executed. You walk into many silver screens and see these horror movies be brought to life in such a cool, badass way. The set design is really cool, just the opening scene alone was amazing. It was truly unlike anything I've seen in a Haunted Maze experience. The individual horror movie segments were so awesome. I liked how they all delved into different kinds of slashers. I also love the energy from all the scare actors as well. They really channeled their inner Myers and Voorhees. My favorite kinds of Halloween experiences are the ones where you could tell that the creators really poured their heart and soul into it. And it's very apparent that Cinema Slasher was made by horror fans for horror fans. And for this year, a lot of the mazes made me think to myself like, you know, maybe this scene was a bit better the first time around or like something about this part feels off compared to last year. Nah, Cinema Slasher felt like it never left. If you were to ask me what my all time favorite scary farm mazes are, this would definitely be at the top three. It might even be one of my favorite Halloween attractions ever. Yeah, I love Cinema Slasher that much. Now let's finally talk about the two new kids on the block, Widows and 8 Fingers 9, The Boogeyman. Let's start with Widows. Now I've been hearing a lot of great reviews about the maze beforehand, and I gotta say after experiencing it, I think the hype was warranted. The facade I think is an all timer for knots. Walking in, it was already super dark and creepy. The maze does not waste any time. It opens up with a creepy old lady in a rocking chair and a giant spider comes dangling down. 
Yeah, if you're deathly afraid of spiders or old people, you literally wouldn't even last after that opening. The walls and decor were covered in spiders of different shapes and sizes. There were even little animatronic spiders coming out of the mouths of dead bodies. I'm not a huge arachnophobe, but even that creeped me out. The maze starts off in a nursing home, and then it gets super weird, and then we, the guests, discover an underground society filled with spider people. But it's not like this huge, like, tonal shift. It manages to keep that creep factor. The entire maze was just creepy and disgusting, and I mean that in the best possible way. If there's one thing that I would personally change about Widows, it's that I wish we spent just a little bit more time in the nursing home before discovering the evil spider society. But other than that, it's a great addition to the scary farm lineup, a great replacement for the deaths, and overall just another big hit for Knots. Eight Fingers Nine, however, was kind of a mixed bag for me. On one hand, I really enjoyed the set design and the overall old-timey village aesthetic. It reminded me a lot of the Vavitch. The look of the sets and the way they approach the story is pretty unique. On the other hand, I don't have a clue what the story is. From what I gathered from the Nightmares Revealed event, it's a unique take on a boogeyman story. But while I was walking through the maze, similar to Room 13, it just felt like a collection of scary spooky stuff happening. And this boogeyman himself, Mr. Eight Fingers Nine, looks kind of ridiculous. So yeah, I don't think Eight Fingers Nine was terrible. There is a lot to enjoy here, but there were just a lot of decisions that I definitely would have made differently. So now that I finally talked about all of the mazes, let's move on to the scare zones. Now, if you guys are new to my channel, I also cover Halloween Horror Nights content. And one thing about HHN that I always complain about are their scare zones. They really like that Halloween-y feel and when they have certain themes, they don't really commit to them because they feel very poorly put together. That is far from the case with the scare zones here at Dots. The monsters here are a totally different breed. The actors completely disappear into the roles and they are everywhere. There are very few safe zones in the park. The streets just ooze with atmosphere, so much blue lighting and an abundance of fog. To me, Ghost Town feels so much like Halloween. Not only are the themes of each scare zone very distinct from each other, but the overall layout of the theme park just lends itself to them being more visually interesting. So yeah, if you ask me, Knott's is definitely top dog when it comes to scare zones and other theme parks should take notes. Just so much talent, not only from the scare actors, but from like all the set designers. And that is gonna be it for today's video. Now, as far as like ranking the mazes, um, it. I didn't really have a strong desire to like rank all the mazes because I feel like people can get something out of like each maze and like I feel like any of these could be somebody's number one. That's what I love about Knott's mazes like there's no like clear like oh worst ones best ones like no I feel like they're all solid like all around. But if I had to rank them from worst to best for like number one to number ten and all around I would have it like this. Again, like, I didn't put too much thought into this one. It is such a change, but, like, yeah, I, I do have a very clear, like, bottom two, and I do have a very clear number one, but everything else in between might as well just be interchangeable. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click the like button. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Also, down in the comments, what was your favorite part of Not Scary Farm? Or what was your favorite maze? What was your favorite scare zone? What's a cool little story or experience that you had that you want to share? Anything you want to share involving Not Scary Farm this year? Let me know down in the comments. Once again, thank you so much for watching. And until then, see you all in the fog.